Hello, friends. Thanks so much for Hi. joining us here at Non Toxic. <laughs> he just called me Tweety Pants. <laughs> Giggling about that. All right, so um, this is our first video in our um, series about the famine for the words of God. I cannot believe how much I have uncovered on this topic in Scripture. It just kept coming to me and coming to me. It was just wow. Um, and I'm still not even done with my study yet on it. I want to mention something real fast. We uh, this um, we just did a short well. Short, short for, for us. us. <laughs> I think it ended up being 20 minutes, but something like that. We thought it was going to be under 10, but we both ended up talking more than we thought we would. But we just did a video about uh, um, part of the, some of the things that are going to come up as the famine grows. Um, but we told you at the end of it how to, I mean, I, I, hopefully you can still get these uh, these study mm -hmm. materials, I, I, I would guess. But we told you at the end how you can um, avoid those pitfalls at, at the very end of it. So anyway, the, that, I, I'm guessing that that video will be posted before this one so that it, so that it can be uh, an example. Yeah, so that video um, will be about, was Paul a false prophet? That's, that's that video. So. Yeah. So. All right. So I, so y you work outside the home. I do a lot. Yeah. I do not. I have, I, no. I don't work for someone. I work, we have a, we have a small business that, I mean, we're, we looked at how many clients we have just the other day and it's, uh, we're, we have, God has provided us with, uh, um, something we, something to be proud of. So. But I work. I'm, I'm a small. We're a small business. We don't work for anyone. But the small business takes me out into the world. So. Yeah, yeah. So, but I don't go anywhere. I haven't gone anywhere since June, June, early June, 2019. Before that, I left once a month. Uh, the groceries. property to get groceries. <laughs> yes. Um, but since June 2019, I haven't been able to go anywhere because this world is so freaking toxic. Um, people are trying to kill me right and left. Literally, like they don't know it. They're ignorant. But, uh, yeah, so hopefully you're not one of those. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I've got all sorts of videos and lots of articles on the website about laundry and EMFs and all of these other sorts of things. So. And she just, Friday, Friday, the, Friday I got the message, the message came in the email. This, ready, or this video is now ready on Get that get that video. Just posted on Friday. Is that you? That was my stomach. <laughs> I'm hungry. Just posted on Friday a video about science, the scientific method, and how it's changed. So the, that goes in conjunction with what she's mm -hmm. talking about right now. Right. So I study a lot. Um, a whole whole lot at least an hour a day every day of the week uh, there's a day here and there where I don't because for example if I have a migraine that's too bad or something like that otherwise uh, this body that's been harmed by pharmacaea requires a lot of upkeep and that requires a lot of downtime for me um, and so I could listen to stupid YouTube videos if I wanted to sure um, but instead I study I, I listen to my Lord and I study and um, that can mean eight to ten hours a day um, in some cases it's summer right now so not so much right now um, not to that extent but in the winter time yeah I can be in a bathtub eight hours ten hours uh, just trying to survive and uh, so that is where I come from um, my research on worldly things uh, is has different information than that of almost everybody else because my life depends on the accuracy of my research and I take that approach and I apply it to the Bible because my eternal life depends on it. You and I, I hear this occasionally from, from customers <laughs> that their spouse is a good researcher and you might be a good researcher you, you might be, but I guarantee you, 
if your life depends on something, mm-hmm. you're gonna be. You, uh, this 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 lady is she takes that to a whole nother level. You're you're not going to trust much of anything that's out there if your life depends on it because your life depends on it and you don't want to accidentally kill yourself. Right. So because um, that's a reality for me. It, it is very much a reality. Um, it's uh, I mean I'm a I'm an okay researcher. I, I mean I take five minutes here and there and figure stuff out, but. Um, I don't believe that there is anyone else out there who is as good as she is and I mentioned to people that my wife uh, her research her life depends on her research so um, I'm guessing that um, your husband or wife is not quite as good as that but um, good for them for being a good researcher Right. Uh, and by the way, I am sharing in a series about how to do your own research. Um, so hopefully, I know that's helping some people. Um, and uh, if you haven't checked it out, then go check it out. It's on our website. Video series, how to do your own research. And that's where the scientific video, that's part of yeah. part of that. And it's, it's, I just watched it this morning, and it's really good. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's informative. And it's, uh, I mean, there's one aspect of it I scratched my head on just a little bit, but we talked it through and it made sense after. So, um, anyway. Right. All right. So, because we are in a spiritual famine right now, um, many are tempted to listen to false prophets and entertain doctrines of devils. Uh, That's not okay. If you have time or if you're... um, wanting more from us then you can listen to some of our videos more than once we do we we listen to our videos more than once uh because sometimes we forget about something that we learned and you you will be tested um we have mentioned before in videos about um, how it will get harder and harder to um you, you you come learning Following Yeshua, you develop. There's a there's a set of morals and a set of values of how you should um, approach life that come into play, and um, those can be challenged when you least expect it um, daily. Um, and we have talked about that before. How you have to. Sometimes you have to check yourself and make sure that what you're doing is in line with what Yeshua calls you to do. And that means, sometimes that means, we are, because of that, we're held to a higher standard. And um, we don't subscribe to anything. I mean, I forget forget where it's at, but we are actually called to um, depart from the world. So... Shun the world. Shun the world. Um, That means that these values, morals and values and standards come into play. We are called to depart from whatever the world may call for. Because typically it's... um, I don't care about the people five years from now, but all I, all I care about is getting, uh, I'm not going to be here, so it doesn't matter. Um, You're talking about repairs. I'm just talking about in general, yeah. um, these more, the, the, how you handle yourself, the values, the morals, all of that. You're called to be a step above mm-hmm. everyone else, and that can be tricky. It can be tough, and it can hit you like a boatload of bricks um, when you least expect it when that comes into play so um, just because that happens doesn't mean that you go looking for a false prophet who makes it easier for you that's not how this works right right so uh, in our in beginning our study of this topic uh, we will be looking at Amos however first we're going to talk about emotional beliefs a little bit 
And then we're going to talk about the present situation today in churchianity. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a you, word. Yeah, you didn't even know that was a word. Like, well, you thought that I made it up. I didn't make it up. I don't know see, who made it up, but we made up Rockefellercation because it's fun and it just it's seriously accurate. It is it's fun and accurate. What? Be, how much better can it be? Right. So yeah. The, what was it again? Churchianity. Churchianity. Yeah, churchianity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not Christianity because Christ isn't at the center. It's church that's the center. All right, so um, emotional beliefs. We have a couple of videos up on fear. Please go check them out. You can search our videos on Odyssey, by the way, all of our videos. If you are watching this on YouTube, by the way, we are super shadow banned on there, like super pants, super pants, crazy pants, bad shadow banned on there. Um, and it, basically, if you talk about God and speak any truth on there, you're going to be shadow banned. So uh, please go subscribe to us everywhere else. We've got a link to our website below. You can subscribe to our newsletter, um, which I get out, you know, once a week or less. Right now I'm at about once a month because uh, it's been a crazy year this year in 2022 for us. But um, well, that's not the yes. It, it, we have been very blessed to be very, very consistently busy. However, the um, she's had trouble breathing. Yeah. And um, it, it hasn't, it's not getting, um, it, was, it got quite bad. We, we have a tool now to uh, help with that, which is actually probably the step of why we're doing videos now because we, she just hasn't had the, uh, um, the, the, the breath right. to, to do them. Um, it's, it's, we, we know that um, prophecy would suggest that it's not going to get better. So um, that's, we, we move forward with, with, that, with that, that vision in mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you want to know more about that, you can go search our website for microwave sickness for that article um, in which we discuss how all the small cell towers, all those other fun, fun, fun things in the surveillance state and technocracy and all those other things uh, come into play in the Bible and prophecy. So, uh, emotional beliefs. We are constantly conditioned today to have feelings about everything, uh, especially if you're on social media. If you're on social media, get off of social media, generally speaking. Uh, it seriously messes with your mind. I used to be on social media. Um, I was a holdout until I think, 2012, I think it was, and uh, because I used to be in social work, so I wouldn't no and <laughs> that would be way too dangerous for me i worked with drug dealers and all sorts of other um similar people um and so for example uh when we got married i was in social work and i didn't want my mom to become a subject of uh, an angry client because i w- at the time was working with a drug dealer out of chicago um and recommending that the child not go with him <laughs> and I have, you know, I had other clients too. Um, all of my clients weren't like that, but you know, some were. And I didn't. If it had been, if our wedding had been published in newspapers, and that would have been public as to the name of my mother and where she lived. And so um, that was why we didn't. Like, but that, of course, was 2006. That was a long time ago. But yeah, ooh. but people are people get uh, people get fired um, based on. Um, they, they decide to go to a bar and they film themselves and yeah. their their boss sees it and um, they could very I mean that gets people fired they yeah. your your bosses are all up in as far as um, if, if you if you are and you're encouraged to film yourself everywhere you go now uh, you're encouraged to do the things that um, video platforms like and that gets you that gets you paid sometimes and um, you're encouraged to do it but beware your boss is uh could be watching and could say, well i don't want my company being represented by that and um your next meeting is termination meeting. so it's been that way for a few years right and it's not getting any better right well so that's part of the surveillance state because if you're documenting everywhere you're going and what you're doing, then that tells the algorithms who you are, what your beliefs are. 
Uh, are you a danger to the New World Order or not? Um, you want to be a threat, by the way. You want to be a threat because you don't want to be here for a lot of the things that are coming. I don't want to be here for a lot of things that are coming. So the emotional beliefs are really, really um, encouraged on social media. You know, if you go through a post, you got to like it or dislike it. And then now, um, well, I don't know when Facebook came out with it, but with the little uh, smiley face, angry face, surprised face, sad face, you got to have feelings about this. Uh, fact, faith, feelings. Your feelings are at the end of the train, not at the beginning. But this world wants us to believe that our feelings should run us, that our heart should run us. And the Bible tells us the heart is wicked. The heart of man is wicked above all. So that's why you see on Hallmark, by the way, we do watch Hallmark. We don't watch any of their Holy Day movies, but we, uh, we intentionally avoid those. But, you know, some of the rom-coms and, you know, romantic movies sure. and love movies. But it's always your heart. Follow your heart. Yeah, and I mean, and occasionally, occasionally there'll be some, uh, it, you can tell when it is a little bit of controlled opposition, um, the views expressed in the movie will be a, a, a little bit off of what the world wants you to believe, and uh, so uh, that, that comes into play sometimes, but... Um, for the most part, they are still um, relatively clean, um, relatively absent of um, the things that are followed to get actors and actresses awards these days, um, like pride and all of that stuff. Um, mostly, it's creeping in. It's creeping, it's creeping in. in. It is creeping in. We when it is a little bit too much we, uh, we, we we shut it off some of it one film that we started last weekend was very disturbing he was flaming <laughs> he was on fire yeah he was <laughs> Any, anywho um, there's a and we haven't there, there's a a anyway there, yeah, there's another yeah, platform so. that we would watch if they had any other anymore Right. Stuff on. Right. Well, anyway, so if something is starting to feel wrong in a movie, just shut it off. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Just shut it off. That's what we do. Uh, if there, if a guy comes on and you know what I'm talking about, they don't have to be outward and be talking about boyfriends and stuff. Uh, you know how they act. And then we just shut it off. That's that. And by the way, I had a friend who was gay in high school. I was very... He was... Man, those kids were so mean to him. Um, but we're supposed to be a friend to those people. We're supposed to love the person and hate the sin. Just like if if you have a friend who's sleeping around or whatever. You love your friend. You love the person and you hate the sin. So, mm -hmm. um, of course, making these statements, YouTube hates that. But and I don't you know, care. We are, we are called to plant seeds mm -hmm. whenever, we, whenever we can. Uh, obviously, as I said before... Going into a crowd of people and shouting out verses and stuff like that is not going to get you or any anybody anywhere really. You might get put in a hospital for it, but or arrested. You know those those kinds of things. So that's not good. But um, you plant seeds whenever you can. Whether it's uh, people will notice when, if you plant seeds when you can. People will notice that there's something different about you, and if they choose, if they want to talk to you more about it, okay. If not, you leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, nobody really wants to talk past the seat, so yeah. um, you don't get offended by that. It's just it is what it is, and you move on. Mm -hmm. It's there's no no emotion to it. Yes. Yeah. Well, I know, know that's something you come across all of the time is people being emotional about, about everything everything uh you know a yard of mulch oh it's this is the end of the world um this i ordered this 300 hundred dollar thing and it's not what i expected and i'm upset about it now and you always remind people you know we're living in a different world uh yeah. everything is crap that's produced these days 
nothing's made like it used to be. <laughs> you know, and you usually usually you approach it as well, our approach to it is that we expect things not to work, and then we're excited if things do work. Yes. So. And, I mean, there are, there are, she, she pretty much said it, it, it exactly. Um, I have to remind people constantly that um, the things that are produced now are, they're, I said, things aren't what they used to be. Um, not sure why you expected it to be as it used to be, but... Um, it, I'll get the phrase. Well, that that just that just pees me off, and I say, well, why? Uh, uh, um, it's it's a different world right now. Um, we just it, it, it's wrong. We move on, figure something else out, and that that, that that's it. Mm-hmm. And um, the it's it's just uh, it, it, it's amazing. The uh, I, I run into things like that and other things all the time. Right. So, so this uh, tendency to rely on emotion and uh, being programmed to be emotional about everything, this is part of the famine. And the reason why I state this is that it's part of the spiritual famine for the Word of God is because this is a problem for a lot of people who profess to follow Christ because they have been so indoctrinated by the apostate church. Um, and we were, okay, we were, absolutely, yeah, for sure we were. And they've been so indoctrinated to have these certain beliefs, such as the pre-trib rapture, and well, the Olivet Discourse wasn't really the same thing about the end of days, and it, there's just so many doctrines out there um, that I can't even begin to list them all. But they, and, and especially, especially a lot of times these, um, People with these false doctrines will make it. They'll make the um, mistake of the appeal to authority. Well, that's what my pastor says, uh, you know, or this is what biblical scholars say, and things like that. Um, but that's a logical fallacy. The appeal to authority is is by definition a logical fallacy, and so you have these people who have these beliefs, and if you challenge that belief with scripture. Um, especially if you examine the actual Greek and do a deep dive of things, then they get mad about it. They get upset about it because they have feelings about it. And the problem is their belief is based not on fact, but on emotion. Mm -hmm. And so if your um, belief is based on fact, on your deep, intense thorough study of the Bible while you're testing every spirit, comparing scripture to scripture, looking at the Greek or Hebrew, depending on where you're at, then if someone says you're wrong about this, then you don't have any feelings about it. Besides, okay, well, you know, uh, oh, a recent verse I came across, let the ignorant be ignorant. <laughs> I love it so much. It's such a huge relief uh, because there's so many false doctrines out there if they're ignorant, let them be ignorant. Let the ignorant be ignorant. We're not supposed to strive. And anything that you get from... If somebody says something and they say, well, pastor said it. Okay, so let's, let, let's dive back a little bit. So a pastor has been through school. They've learned from Rockefeller Cation. And also, they're a pastor, so they're they're making a living from it. So um, that's filthy lucre. So pastor filthy lucre equals false prophet. So because you're listening to yet another false prophet, you are not supposed to profit from your mess from a. Your, any any message that you get from from God that you share with people, you are not supposed to profit from it at all. So um, there's 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 that people. I mean, money, the love of money is the root of all evil, and there's a there's there's a there's a reason for that. People get emotional about money all the time. And it is up to whoever's involved to um, be sane uh, about it 
and um, hold your ground as far as the uh, where your morals and values and what you're called to do come into play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you just alluded to goes for our next uh, point is the present situation today in churchianity. Um, by the way, in this study, we're going to look. Uh, we're going to be studying in context for the most part, not all the time, because um, I literally have 80 pieces of paper front and back here. Um, with, and that's with not even studying every single verse in context. <laughs> so we, we, She asked me this morning if I wanted to do videos today, and I rarely ever turn down doing that. But she came out to we do highlight, you know, we do a review. She came out with a stack. <laughs> that was yeah. that thick mm -hmm. of paper. And I said, wow, she says that's not even all of it. That's how much the Bible has to say about where we are at with the spiritual famine. That's how much the Bible has to say about spiritual famine. I am still mind blown about it. I mean, because when something is important in the Bible, it's repeated over and over and over and over and over. Oh my goodness, I still shocked. <laughs> at how much relevant scripture there is in regards to this topic. And I will remind you one more time. I said it in the video prior, which uh, I'm assuming will be posted before this, but going to the YouTubes, the Odysseys, the, the, the Twitters, the TikToks, I don't even know what else is out there, um, going there to try to find more information on the truth about what the Bible has to say isn't the answer. We have videos up on our platforms that tell what we use to study the Bible. You can go buy them and I mean you could use the internet to look up the, the Greek and the Hebrews and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Uh, also, mm -hmm. but um, these study materials that we talk about and other videos that are on platforms, I'm assuming they haven't deleted or anything like that, um, they take you beyond the milk that is in the Bible that will, it will open your mind to other things and that is a workaround. I am always in the world trying to find a workaround to something because uh, plan A doesn't work all the time. <laughs> so your plan B, if you can't find anything else, come to the paper. Oh my goodness, it's not digital. Whoa. Right. I know how surprising that can be for um, this technology-driven world that actually paper has information on it and not a tablet screen. What? Anyway, um, these study materials will help you avoid the spiritual um, famine that is growing. And there are false doctrines in them. Do not be, do not misunderstand us. Right. There are absolutely false doctrines, otherwise it wouldn't be published, okay? So otherwise they wouldn't be published. So you really gotta know your stuff. Um, it is better than going to the, the, any other platform mm -hmm. and maybe being dragged into with Paul, false prophet kind of thing, because that is a, as we mentioned, it's a very, very dangerous path to follow, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't be on that path if you had this information. Right, well, so discernment is essential, mm -hmm. and I've got a video up on how to identify a false prophet. Uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, search false prophet, um, you'll find it's also, at, I don't know, I think it's on YouTube, I don't know if it's elsewhere or not, but uh, there's lots of scripture that tells you how to identify a false prophet, uh, but these days, um, for me, I just use discernment, because I prayed for it years ago. Discernment um, is not something that once it's granted to you, it's, you're going to just be able to identify everything that's a lie, or everyone that's lying. That's not the case at all. It's a skill. It's something that um, sharpens with use, and the more you use it, the better it's going to get. So the present situation in churchianity today, uh, number one, we got Bible translations that are just, it's not even the same book, okay? It's, it's not even the same book. 
um, inspired by Satan. We got a video up on Bible translations. Churches are 501c3s. Uh, we've got a video up on uh, sound about church. If you look for, like the apostate church, I can do a short little. Mm -hmm. Okay, short sure. On, yeah. um, I, an analogy will come to mind. So you're at work, and your boss says, "Do this, or you're fired." And the the, the do this is completely um, immoral. It's against everything that you believe in, and you decide you don't want to do it and you're fired so you lose you lose your job because you didn't the, the your connection to that job um, made you do something that you don't, don't want to do um, churches with the connection to 501c3s there's a financial connection to the um, municipality that they live in they are granted tax breaks or tax-free stuff while they're there. So that means you're financially tied to them. So if the city comes to the church and says, hey, help us pass out this because it's for the health and safety of the community, and you say, uh-uh, not doing that, they can say, well, um, you're no longer a 501c3 mm -hmm. and all of that. And that's just one. I mean, there it comes down to patrons. I mean, how do churches make money? They make money by putting butts in the seats and having those people give to the church. So those people can come in and say, you need to not talk about this or my million dollar donation this year goes bye bye. Mm -hmm. And what's a church going to do? Um, if they say no and that million dollars goes bye bye, they might go belly up because they mm -hmm. can no longer pay their bills. Yeah. So those are two reasons why being connected financially to something, a church being connected financially can greatly affect the message put out there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Filthy lucre. Right. Well, continuing with the filthy lucre and the partnering with the state, um, some churches here in the United States uh, as of 2022 have partnered with oh, the state yeah. in some way. Um, I believe it was Pennsylvania and some other state that I heard are read that I partnered with the state and they get paid 10 to 20 dollars for going from door to door uh, convincing people to commit abominations and poison themselves and engage in genetic manipulation on an experimental level uh really uh that's a problem all right so also uh, thirdly another aspect of the present situation in churchianity today that is contributing to the famine for the word of the lord is that Bible studies and sermons are generally superficial. And this comes from someone who went to Bible study for years and years and years and years and years. And we just realized, or I just realized this this morning, but pastors never tell you. They'll tell you to go, they'll tell you to go home and pray for, mm -hmm. for people. Yep. But they will, I've never ever heard a pastor on TV or in person or otherwise tell you to study for yourself. Mm -mm. They will always bring up what the church is doing, and if you're if you have a son or, or daughter or a kid, have them go to uh, encourage encourage youth group. They will always encourage those things, but they never encourage you to study for yourself and maybe even challenge them on what they said. They never do that. Yeah. So there's 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 that. Yeah, and so sermons and Bible studies aren't spiritually challenging. They keep people on the milk. Uh, they tell people what they want to hear. They will gladly welcome in the Antichrist when he comes along, or it. I think it's think, think the Bible says the Antichrist is a he uh, later on. But I mean, we're a ways, we're a long ways away. All right, so we're not worried about the Antichrist at all. Like not even the tiniest bit. We do not anticipate being here. We want to be in the great multitude. So. You 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 stick to there. We were talking earlier about the uh, there. When you read the Bible, you get a kind of a picture of what's going to happen, what's coming, uh, and how to handle things as they come. And then on the other in the other timeline, there is what's you know your life what you're doing in the world and how it matches with 
what God has planned and you're constantly doing making sure that you're on that straight and narrow and it can be it can be challenging at times yeah so. yeah so I continue on this topic of Bible studies and sermons uh, due to fear controversial topics generally are not addressed <laughs> biblically uh, and generally they aren't addressed at all period because because otherwise people won't people will get get up in the middle of a service and leave as I saw one time in college I'm out in the world a lot and I will tell you this the hot topics at least that involve around health they aren't talked about I have not been asked once if I have done anything health wise about things they are not talked the only time I ever hear about those things being talked about is if there is a protocol or something that so an employee of the place needs to follow or if it comes up that's the only time I ever hear anyone talking about it so um, I just found that interesting it's huge yeah. it's a huge hot topic in the at least on the screens mm -hmm. but it's not talked about in the world right because on social media you got people virtue signaling uh, and saying you got to do this everybody needs to do this you're killing grandma or whatever uh, you don't love people and attacking people online but in, as you're saying in person it's not a thing <laughs> and I, I serve both commercial people and residentially yeah and it's it's actually a have one quite large commercial and several uh, about a handful of um, decent sized commercial or residential things and none of them talk about these hot hot to they may talk about other hot topics that are coming up you know forests and trees and their love of those those things nature and worship na nature stuff but nope not not a single thing about um, anything health related that uh that may or may not be uh, okay. It's just, I was surprised. Mm -hmm. I haven't been asked once, not once, about any of that. And we don't have any anything about that stuff saying, well, this is what we're doing to save the world. Yeah. Um, we never put that on Google, because Google kept, because we've got, for non-toxic home, we've got a Google thing for people to find us locally, and people are finding us locally. But uh, Google kept sending, like over the past few years, has sent over and over and over emails to me saying, hey, you need to say something about this. You need to talk about this. You need to say what you're doing about it. And uh, I no, I never, I never did. I never did. No, I don't, nope. <laughs> um, we've got things in videos and articles, but nobody hardly um, digs that deep who is blinded by the God of this world, quite frankly. And here's another funny note. This, this isn't spiritual, by the way. It's just a, a funny note since we're talking about it. But um, I wear, to meet new clients, whatever I'm wearing that day to work in. And no one seems to care. So um, just just throwing, throwing that out there. But it is very interesting to me when I'm out there what people care about and what they don't, what people talk about and what they don't. It must, I don't, I, I don't do social media, I, ne I never really have. And it's very interesting to know what, I mean, does somebody out there tell somebody not to talk about things in person? Is it, um, is it uh, a, uh, is it considered seriously bad or, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, it's just, it's, it, people are silent about it. Unless, like I said, they're employees of, uh, of a place and that place has protocols and they have to they're in a situation where they have to use them that's the only time i've ever heard it well yeah I, well i think that it's because inherently deep down i think most people who have a different belief than we do because we've actually done our research um inherently they know they're wrong inherently they know they're wrong about this but because they're afraid 
of confrontation and because they what emotion because yeah because they're afraid you're right emotion <laughs> um then they don't discuss that sort of thing in person and uh, with some especially so the name is non-toxic home all right so you're going to places as a representative of non-toxic home so that right in and of itself tells a lot of people where we stand on toxins <laughs> yeah, the, the closest i have ever gotten to talking about any of our beliefs one customer asked me where did you come up with the name non-toxic home and i tell them i told them i didn't <laughs> <laughs> my wife did a few years back i didn't like it i thought it was the least creative thing in the world but it had that, you that. You're welcome. Yeah. It had that on my. Sometimes she's Present. just not creative. Sometimes it's just. <laughs> sometimes it's just blow it out there. It is what it is. And anyway, um, I told them that, and I said, "You are allergic to everything commercially created in the world, just about, and um, that's where the name derived from." We, it had an online presence, and so rather than starting something over, that's 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 what we what we did. And obviously, we uh, we have a different uh, approach to things than people do in the world. And I said approach to everything. Didn't I didn't even didn't specify didn't specify approach. We have a different approach and outlook to everything that is in the world mm -hmm. and that's what the name he said well I think it's kind of catchy no. <laughs> and I said well thank you but I still don't <laughs> 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 it's just what it is right right so, so this was at the end of the conversation and we were we had had a, a nice a nice meeting and we, I'm honest with everybody if they if I can't go to an introduction and be myself and be honest and all that stuff and have the customer like me, that's not my customer. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm not offended by it, but I'm gonna show up and I, I'm a self-proprietor. I work and then I go to interviews or meetings with people and if they're offended by the fact that I might show up grass all over me, that's on them. Yeah, yeah, so, so uh, continuing in our discussion regarding well, yeah, emotion. Well, so fear, uh, this impacts a lot of people who put videos online and write articles online because they're afraid of losing subscribers. And so they won't address uh, controversial topics such as the LG57G2Q movement plus, uh, um, right. you know, don't want to offend anybody for that. Um, love the sin or hate the sin, as always. Love people, love people not the sin all right so a lot of times um things are a lot of times passages are summarized rather than read um from the bible uh sometimes so i i've been thinking lately about that and about uh church services growing up and you know i was very active in church um when I, throughout my life just until i couldn't be anymore because it was too toxic for me um, and actually, we never found really a, a really good church uh, locally. We went to a whole lot of churches, um, and none of them, no, none of them are worthwhile um, near us. And we now know why. Now we know why we weren't supposed to fit in. Well, they they um, were all they were all connected to filthy lucre and designed to keep butts in the seats. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So passages are generally summarized. Uh, in most worship services, there'll be one or two verses read. And then um, oftentimes, at least in the services that I went to, that verse was read by the pastor and, and they spoke about it for 20 minutes or uh, they summarized a, a passage, a section. They didn't read the section and they didn't read the verse in context. Uh, and so. they didn't dive in and tell you what to uh, say. Um, just gonna, I mean, I don't know what in Amos chapter 4 verse 4 there's a word called transgress 
it has a number above it, so it means something. Just I'm just being random right now, but they didn't. They would just read the the verse four, and they would they don't dive into what uh, what does in the Greek. I think this. Is, oh, this is Hebrew. Hebrew. My bad. Yep. Whoops. What does transgress mean in Hebrew? They yeah. were they don't dive into that. So because yeah. I'm telling you. Just as an example, I've used this example before. The word darkness that is in, I think it's in the first, for very first verse or the second verse of the Bible. The word darkness doesn't just mean darkness. Right. It's there's a lot more to it, mm -hmm. but you're not going to learn that if you go to church because they're not going to tell you what the Hebrew of darkness actually really means. And by the way, it's pretty dark. <laughs> punny. So punny. Um, punny. It's trying to be. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, but as you alluded to, the deep things of God are not are not addressed. Um, those can't be addressed in 20 minutes once a week. That's not going to happen. Absolutely not. I mean, we couldn't even talk about um, a uh, current uh, goings on online, and, and it was hard to keep that under 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. The whole Paul thing. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. um, we couldn't even talk about that, and that was fairly uh, fairly simple, and we took almost 20 minutes just to talk about that. Yeah, I thought it, we both thought it'd be shorter, but anyways, yeah. so scripture is twisted, mishandled, it's not um, handled with care, you got to be so careful in handling scripture. There's a verse in the New Testament about deceitfully handling scripture or something like that. Uh, we see that all the time, that's the norm today, is deceitful handling of scripture. And that goes along with the last two or three verses of Revelation, which, by the way, if you go down the Paul thing, Revelation doesn't exist to you. So, bye-bye. Anyway, um, it says, do not add to or take away from. Um, if a pastor or whoever's the head of your church is summarizing a verse or a group of verses that they are reading, um, they are, in effect, both adding to and taking away from while they're in front of you. So if they were actually reading it in context, the section, that would be what that means. Read it as it is on the page. Um, summarizing takes things out. It's like a movie trailer. It makes you like that, or it does its best to make you like that that movie. It makes you feel good about it. Makes it. you feel good about it. Feel it makes good you about that doctrine. And you know if, it's, if and you know if a trailer is bad, how bad is that movie gonna be? <laughs> yeah. So a summarize uh, when a pastor summarizes something, they'll say to save time, but they're summarizing it. They are only hitting the high points. They're hitting what mm -hmm. they want to talk about. There there might be something in there that. Uh, um, my goodness, my, my congregation can't hear that. If they're feeding the flock, then they wouldn't be focused on 20 minutes. They'd be saying, hey, this is going to take as long as it's going to take. And that's basically what we're doing. We're basically telling you, hey, we got a lot to say. There's a lot of scripture in here. Yeah. It's going to take as long as it's going to take. And that just is what it is. We made that decision. We There for a while, we were trying to keep things short because yeah. um, the various things. But um, we got basically told that um, that wasn't a good idea so from the Holy Ghost the thank Holy you for Ghost. that Holy Ghost. so we just do what we do we put up what it takes to get the message out there yeah yeah so instead of forming beliefs from scripture we see the opposite now academically speaking there are words for this one is one is uh, I good Jesus and the other was I Jesus or something like that. I don't know which is which. I don't know how to spell it. I don't know how to say it. I don't remember. What? But there there so there is an actual word for developing your doctrine from scripture versus developing your doctrine and then trying to find verses in scripture that support your doctrine. Oh. There are there are, these are two different things, two different concepts and there are actual words. You mean in the like, English language. You mean like research studies that um, where the person who is funding the research tells you what you need to prove and you go into that research study designing it to prove that. Uh, okay, so that 
yeah, like that. Yes, 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 like that. Just like that, actually. Uh, just like that, yeah. But uh, those are actually academic terms that obviously I just butchered because I don't remember what they are. Because <laughs> it's been 20 years since I read them or learned about them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Super smart girl right here. Well, you did graduate uh, three three point six or seven or something like that. Eight. Sorry. Undergrad. Four point oh graduate. No. Um, Total so, dummy here. Right. But so. Yeah, um, fourthly, um, in regards to the present situation in churchianity today, <laughs> can't speak. Uh, very few are studying diligently. There's. Very few people study carefully, precisely, accurately, uh, slowly. This doesn't, ha you, we're not going for um, a drive through Bible study here. But that's what most are today. And that's what how most people approach things. They say, oh, well, I have 30 minutes to study the Bible today, and that's all. Um, some, and so false prophets um, rarely encourage personal study, which we, you alluded to earlier. Yeah. Um, well, there's a reason for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so because very few people are studying carefully, precisely, accurately, personally, Oops. few people are proclaiming actual biblical truths online. I searched a couple of years ago. That would have been in 2020. I looked. I tried to find pastors, Bible studies, people. I didn't find hardly anyone. Um, there were... You know, maybe a handful of people, but you know, two or three of them just had a couple of videos up, and that's all. See, here, so. here's the thing, people. Um, and I alluded to it before. Um, YouTube really, I mean, they they have different people want to make money, and YouTube drives if. if YouTube drives people to your channel or away from your channel based on what you say. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you are a um, prophet who is putting things on YouTube to make money, then there's filthy lucre involved, and you are driven by getting those. Just like a, just like a pastor is uh, designed the sermons to put butts in the seats so that that church can you know pay its bills and, and, and make money and keep keep all the donations coming in you're going to put online what is going to drive the views so that you can get paid i mean people make there are people out there who make serious livings mm -hmm. from yeah. youtube and every Every platform, I think Odyssey is that way too, where you can, where you make money per per view. So you can, we don't, but it, it, anything. And I think Odyssey is also watching what content you put up as well now. So, but it's all money driven. So these people, if you're in, can't find the spiritual truth anywhere else and you go to these platforms these people are going to tell you what they need to tell you to get you to view so they can make money they don't care about anything else they may act like it but they really don't it's all about the money and believe me the more views these people have the more money they're making it's all it's all connected to money now it, most most things online are. It's yeah. just that's just how this world works now. So yeah. Sorry for that. Right. All right. So um, this is basically if we're going to use the word precursor here, uh, like a precursor to our famine for the word Bible study. Um, so we will continue in our discussion, and we will actually get to the scripture part. <laughs> <laughs> here in our next video please be sure to subscribe like do all the things um be sure to subscribe to our weekly not weekly newsletter our free newsletter um because it's not doesn't go out every week all of this is free we make absolutely nothing from 
doing it. So right. So even our um, information online, like we've got a Patreon, but um, if you're if you are in with us just as part of a remnant and not for the other information, then please don't subscribe on Patreon and give us any money um, because that would be filthy lucra. Um, we obviously have the presence for non-hops at home, so that's why we use it for our Bible studies and our scripture because um, we approach life differently um, from the business angle. And as um, believers, uh, we believe that you need to be cognizant of um, the impact that you have on others that can cause suffering upon others just by your choices in what cleaning chemicals you use or what bone you use and those sorts of things. Um, because if you love people, then you don't want to poison them. <laughs> right. And in the, in the business sense, I do things, and we, we came up with these together. We talked about it before I went out in the world with it. But I do things differently in, 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 a, big, in a big, big way. And that includes the, the uh, uh, how, I, how I work, do projects, do, do anything. It's very different than other people's approaches mm -hmm. and we are we are called to be good stewards of the world we are called to do things for God it it, it doesn't matter whether it's mowing a yard or whether it's fixing a toilet we are we are doing things and sometimes we're giving clients kind of bad news if, if we dive into it we're called to do things in a certain way mm -hmm. and um, it's the clients fault if they don't like it I mean it, it, it happens right but the so our patreon I think we get like 15 bucks a month or something like that from however many patreons we have patrons we have right now and then we had get, get some affiliate income but that uh, doesn't even pay the bills for like our our website hosting stuff I don't think no no wait you know it does it does now so but I I have invested so many hours into sharing information to help people especially human canaries that um, it wouldn't even be one cent per hour thus far, um, as far as a profit from that. So it's basically nothing um, that you know we get from from sharing um, that sort of information because we we don't um, encourage people to use toxic products, and that means that we recommend against almost everything on the market, mm -hmm. which really limits um, affiliate income. So, so, but yeah, yeah so. Um, we will see you in our next video in which we will get into Amos. In the meantime, I do urge you to start studying Amos because Amos has a lot of good information in regards to the times that we're living in. Thanks so much for being here. Have a most beautiful and blessed day. Okay. Fantastic.